Well, here we are in uh, Speedo headquarters, no less, in sunny Nottingham with uh, Rebecca Addington, who we last saw uh, a few months ago, where you were telling us about your fear of swimming in the sea because dead bodies might be there Denied. and all sorts. Of, well, yes, maybe, probably not. Um, <laughs> it could be. Yes. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Um, and uh, anyway, we, we have moved on and uh, everything's looking very nice and rosy in the life of Rebecca Addington at the moment. Please tell why. <laughs> no, it was a really good week last week in Sheffield, uh, racing nationals, I was unrested, kind of really in hard training, so it's just a difficult period where it's like the hard training phase and everyone last week was tapered and getting out of the pool and I was just like still going for ages, but it was a good week last week, it was nice to see some fast racing from other people as well, like just Gemma Lowe's 200 fly was amazing and just other people's racing that week was so encouraging and I loved being able to watch the girls 200 free for once and not being in it. It was so nice to be able to watch that and cheer for Joe and Caitlin and everyone. Uh, you mentioned uh, all these uh, other uh, swimmers as well. I mean, British swimming at exactly the right time is looking very good, isn't it? It's amazing. I can't actually believe the amount of depth we have now. Like, usually there's just kind of one or two people that stand out, but now there's just so many strong people and every event has got so much depth as well. It's not just like one, the first person's qualified and then the next person's like three seconds behind. Literally, the races are so close and it's like so encouraging. And we're just getting stronger and stronger every year, to be honest. Now, why do you think that is? Is the lure of London, has that played a part? Or has yeah, it been a definitely. long time coming, all this development? I think it's both. I think obviously London's obviously in the back of everyone's mind and everyone's working really, really hard. But I just think it's been a long time coming. I think the people that are in so are now extremely hard working and extremely talented. Not to say that the people in the past weren't, but I just think we're all now so positive. We all have this belief about us that we can do it. And I just think we all support each other more than we have done in the past. Like if it's kind of the thing that's like, if I'm not there, I want someone else to be on that podium and I'd do anything to help any of the other swimmers out and it's the same with the other people. And I guess success breeds success as well, so you see your training partner get a medal at a Worlds or Olympics and I guess it makes you realise you can do it as well. Yeah, definitely, it kind of follows on from that and I think everyone's just in that kind of place and everybody's just kind of so focused, like we're so professional and we just want to get the job done and we do have some really good races here in Britain now. Just to make the teams is extremely difficult. To even get to a World Championships is extremely difficult and it's sad to see people missing out but it kind of encourages them people more that, oh, I don't want to be that person that misses out and I'm going to work extra hard and it, it all goes from that. And it's pushing you because in many events now to be in the British team you've got to be world class, haven't you? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. The guys that are going to world We've got such a strong team and it's just looking incredible and obviously just to make an mix you only get two people per event it's so difficult and it's like with the events I do we've got three or four girls all so close like obviously there's other girls up and coming and other girls that are strong there but literally there's like 0.5 between about four of us and it's going to be so tough to just get top two. Now tell me about the 800 metres because the 800 metres I've always, you've always told me the 800 metres is your fave event, your best event, the, the event that means the most to you. And obviously it's the one where you rocked up in Beijing and smashed Janet Evans' record. So, you know, it's indelibly linked to you, isn't it? And yet that's the one you have, in inverted commas, struggled with more than any other event pretty much since. It's because of that though. <laughs> it's because it is my favourite event. It is the one that I put most pressure on myself for. It's the one that I get most nervous for. and just means so much and I think that's why it has been a bit of a struggle since Olympics obviously in 2009 it was just because I hadn't done as much work I'd enjoyed the whole exp Olympic experience done everything afterwards and just enjoyed it and I wouldn't change that for the world but I couldn't do the amount of distance work I needed to for the 800 so that's why my 800 suffered at Worlds and then since then it's just been the thing that's like that knocked my confidence a lot and it's just the thing that's like I'm trying to crawl back out slowly and I managed to do that at Commonwealth and this year's yeah. trials and I'm slowly getting back there with the 800 and hopefully can go to Worlds and the one that I would want to do best at is the 800 again so hopefully I can just enjoy that and race well and enjoy racing against the rest of the world. Okay and, and how's that because when we last saw you, you were just moving out so I think you just moved out of the family home 
I believe. So you're you're living by yourself. How's that going? Enjoying life? Um, I don't live by myself. My friend Catherine Wilde, who's a swimmer on Nova as well, she lives with me. Okay. Um, boyfriend's lived with me for a few weeks right. until he moves into his place with Rex. He's only just moved up to Nottingham. So okay. All it's right. nice. It's all fun. Yeah, he's got a nice house in Nottingham and just nice to live with friends and just have a good time. The boyfriend do annoying things like leave the top of the toothpaste and discovering things about him now which perhaps you didn't no, know? he's more OCD than I am. He's oh really? so tidy and so clean. Are you fairly OCD as well? No. <laughs> oh right. I'm OCD about numbers, like right. I can't do anything on an odd number. Like, what, what, sorry, like, what? I have to do everything even, so like I can only set my alarm on a two, four, six or eight. Really? I can't set it on a zero or a five or an odd number, I can't oh, do it. What do you mean you can't? Like, can't do it. So you can't sleep? <laughs> if you said it for what, 7.31? I'd have to change it. I just couldn't do it. Really? I couldn't do it. And just like with the TV volume, it yeah. really annoys me if someone leaves it on an odd. I have to get up and It really it. annoys you? Yeah. I have to have it on an even number. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> I'm just OCD about numbers. Um, right. Um, well, I mean, I'm just trying to think what else. Uh, odd numbers are are not good. Even numbers are good. Yeah. Would you abolish odd numbers given a chance? If you were Prime Minister, you'd abolish odd numbers, would you? Yeah. I'm not sure that's a vote winner, but... I don't get it, like, when people, like, say their lucky number's seven, yeah. or, like, three or something, and I'm like, what? I don't get it. My lucky number's two. I have right. to do everything even. Do you understand people's un unlucky number being 13, then? Yeah. On that basis. Oh, completely. Even though then everyone's like, yeah, but your birthday's on the 17th. That's an odd number. I'm like, yeah, but I can't help the way I was born or when I was born. Right. Any other revelations? Strange revelations such as that? What else goes on at home? <laughs> Nothing that So weird. you're not bothered about the cleanliness, it's your, the boyfriend's more bothered about that. Does he actually hoover? Yeah. He, really? He tidies. I came back from training one day last yeah. week when he, because he's a sprinter and he doesn't do all the sessions I do. Yeah. And he had organised my DVDs and like put them all straight and organised them in category. Did he? It was just like... Okay. For his own volition, he just decided to do it. <laughs> yeah. He was like, I was bored, I had to do it, it was bother bothering me. I was just like, okay. Right. <laughs> Now, London next year, um, obviously, I mean, Beijing was wonderful, wasn't it? But uh, London too. I guess you can't look any further than getting there, can you? No. You actually can't. Like, uh, when I was doing the interviews this morning, the guy was like, yeah, but you'll be going. I'm like, well, I don't know where I'm going. Like, it's such, it is a point that's like, I honest to God don't know. It's the thing that if you get ill the week before, like, you could easily just get a chest infection or yeah. if you get a sickness or anything, then you... You can't like... Or, you, or your race is on the 13th or the 19th <laughs> or the 23rd. <laughs> I don't mind that. But it's just like, it is a thing that you could easily get ill or injured. Like, you could easily just fall over and sprain your wrist or something. And it's yeah. like, even if not... Eat your arm. <laughs> eat my arm, yeah. yeah. I could get that hungry. <laughs> it's just the thing that's like, the, the amount of depth, especially in my events, is so strong that it's like, it's so, it is quite unfair that obviously it is only two people can go, but that's the rules at the end of the day and it's just so tough to even make it that I'm not even worried about the rest of the stuff like so many people say to me oh do you worry about the expectation of this going in well no my only worry at the minute is qualifying I'm not even thinking about the rest like if I qualify come back and talk to me in a year and then I'll tell you different but yeah. at the minute it's literally just qualifying I guess the winning of the medals and all that sort of stuff comes comes later at the end of the equation doesn't yeah. it yeah you've got to get there first that's exactly. your first goal exactly that's the first hurdle but the, the problem is people just as you say oh well you won two gold medals in Beijing so yeah. aren't you just going to turn up and basically win <laughs> I guess people don't really realize like they don't really know that much about the sport or and every sport works different like some I uh, think the seconds don't points or something like that isn't it so it's different for every sport so you can't like I don't expect the public to know that we've got to go to one event qualifier and you've got to come top two and get this certain time etc that's how you qualify they just kind of assume and that's not their fault well, it's been, it seems like, does it seem like yesterday to you or does it seem like a lifetime away that you did what you did in Beijing and the nation fell in love with Rebecca Adlington and a pub was called the Adlington Arms and everybody who hadn't heard of you had suddenly heard of you. Does that seem like yesterday or is a lot of water, if you excuse the pun, under the bridge? Both. It does feel so long ago but I can remember it perfectly and that's why... It's just different because I can literally remember it like it was yesterday, but it just, I just feel completely different now, and it is something that was so long ago, like when you actually think about it. Yeah, well, I remember it like it was yesterday, and hopefully, we'll be seeing more scenes in London, but you've got to get there first. 
I know that, and and you know, and the flat may have to go, un, you know, untidy for a while. And <laughs> your boyfriend will just have to put up with it, you know. And uh, focus on the things that matter at the moment, and um, we'll catch up with you soon. Have a great World Championships. Best of luck, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.